Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited to have you. Today's program is part of the Presidential Primary Sources Project. It's entitled Portraits of Presidential Power Couples, and it's being presented by the Smithsonian National Portrait Gallery. The Presidential Primary Sources Project is a partnership between Internet2, the National Archives and the National Park Service. It's a free series that we put on every year from January through April. This is just a quick reminder by participating today, you are agreeing to be recorded and archived. We do keep recordings of all of our programs on our YouTube channel um, so that teachers and students can access them later. Again, we're really excited to have you and we really want you to participate as much as possible today. So just a few notes on that. Um, what we will use primarily is the chat box. So if you haven't already found that, it looks kind of like a caption bubble, go ahead and click on that. You will be able to ask and answer questions through the chat box. Something to note is what your display name is. So when you chat, it shows us um, your display name. So if you want to change that to your classroom name um, or adjust how your name is shown so that we can call on you appropriately, that would be helpful. If you need help with that, go ahead and just drop a message in the chat and I can always change it for you as well. You can also participate via video if you want to be on video. Um, again, leave a message in the chat and I will promote you so that you have that capability. That said, just make sure that we're being really respectful of both of these tools. Um, we want to interact as much as possible, but we also want to make sure that our questions, comments, thoughts are directly related to what our panelists are talking about. And with that, I just want to thank you again. Um, we're excited to have you. And if you do want to learn more about our upcoming programs, or be able to find recordings of our past programs or of today's programs, this is our website. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and pass it over to the people you came to see. Jocelyn here. Hey. Thank you so much, Therese. Well, good day. As Therese mentioned, my name is Jocelyn and I am part of the National Portrait Gallery Education Department. And I'm joined by my wonderful colleague, Erin here. And we want to welcome you to the National Portrait Gallery's program, Portraits of Presidential Power Couples. So we have lots of interesting things lined up for you. We do want to begin the program as we do with all of our programs, and that is by saying Native peoples have made their homes and communities throughout what is now the United States for a very long time and still live here today. We are grateful to be on these lands, at the school, at the museum, or in our homes, and excited to share this time with you. So as Therese said, our program is very interactive and we want you to participate. Um, so just a reminder, use the chat box and um, let us know your responses um, to the questions and comments we'll have. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it to Erin to get us started. All right, thank you, Jocelyn, and hello, everyone. I'm happy to be here with you this morning. Um, I want to start off by showing you where the National Portrait Gallery is located. So I have this map on the left side of the screen, and we are in Washington, D.C., right behind the star. So between Ver Virginia and Maryland, and I saw in the chat that we do have at least someone joining us from Maryland. So welcome to everyone. The image that you are seeing on the right side of your screen, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger here, is what the exterior of our building looks like. As you can see, it's pretty old. It was built in the 1830s and 1840s. So prior to the beginning of the Civil War. And if you were to come and visit Jocelyn and I at the gallery in person, we would meet you right out front on these stairs here. And then we would take you inside to our beautiful courtyard, which looks like this. Now, we like to begin all of our programs in the courtyard here because it is right in the center of the museum. And behind these walls is where we keep all of our portraits. So be before we go any further, 
um, in the chat, could you please tell me what a portrait is? Just want to make sure we're all on the same page. What is a portrait? While they're typing that, Erin, just want to say we've got people joining us from Buffalo, New York, in addition to Maryland. Excellent. And hopefully yes. some other places too. Yes. All right. So we have a couple answers. Um, they are saying a portrait is a picture of a person. Um, oh, a photo, print, or painting. Um, oh, and we've got someone joining from Idaho as well. <laughs> <laughs> great. Okay, excellent. So those are great responses. Mm -hmm. The official portrait gallery definition is any artwork that is a likeness of a person. So every portrait that we look at with you today is going to have at least one person in it. Now we have about 23,000 portraits in our collection, and we keep about 900 on view at any given time. We do not have time to look at 900 portraits, let alone 23,000 with you all in the next 45 minutes or so. Um, so we're going to focus on about five or six different portraits with you today. Now, our job at the National Portrait Gallery is to tell the story of the United States through the people who have helped to shape it. So we collect portraits of people who have made a really significant impact on United States history to share with students like you all. Um, so who would you expect to see in our collection? All right, let's see. Uh, we've got George Washington, President Obama. Perfect. Oh, pre <laughs> we've got President Grant. Oh, good. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, we collect portraits of lots of different kinds of people because lots of different people have made an impact on our nation. So we have portraits of artists, we have portraits of scientists, teachers, um, people in healthcare, activists, lots of different fields because Again, lots of different people have made an impact on our country. Today, our program is focused on presidents and their first spouses. So we're actually going to be looking at portraits of presidential power couples. We have the only complete collection of presidential portraits outside of the White House, which we are quite proud of. So we're very excited to spend some time sharing that with you all. We're going to actually practice reading the portraits together today. So we'll be using what are called the elements of portrayal to learn more about the story of each sitter or president that we look at today. So we'll be looking for things like facial expression, which can help us figure out how a person is feeling. We'll look at pose, body position. That's helpful to know what a person is doing or maybe also how they're feeling. Their demeanor can be determined by their pose sometimes. Clothing and hairstyle are both very helpful for figuring out what time period a person is from or maybe what their personal style is. Um, the background or the setting. So if you look at Jocelyn and I, our virtual backgrounds, you can see that we work at the National Portrait Gallery because our virtual backgrounds are inside the National Portrait Gallery. Um, we are going to look for different objects or symbols that the artist includes and color. Medium is the material that the artist chooses to use to make the portrait. Um, so you all mentioned photographs and paintings and drawings earlier on. Those are all fantastic examples of mediums. Scale is the size. So the really large portrait or very small and then artistic style all very good things to consider. So before we actually start looking at portraits of presidents and first spouses, I want you to think about what objects or symbols you might expect to see in a portrait of a president. And maybe you could type that in the chat. Oh, all right. So we've got some coming in. Someone has said bald eagle, White House, flag, 
Oh, someone said coins. Interesting. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Those are all really good ideas. Um, we have a list of things too <laughs> that I thought mm -hmm. I would share with you. Um, here's a photograph of the White House. So if you said White House, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, a flag, whether it be a really large cloth flag, or oftentimes we see people in American politics wearing um, a flag pin on their shirt or their lapel. Uh, maybe the podium, right? The president stands behind when they are speaking to the public. And then maybe you thought about the presidential seal. And I, I think somebody mentioned an eagle. Is that true, Jocelyn? Yes, that's right. <laughs> so we see that the eagle is included on the presidential seal, maybe Air Force One, um, and then, of course, the desk that is in the Oval Office. So these are all symbols that make us think of the American presidency. So as we go along, I want you to keep these things in mind, um, and it will help us figure out the story, what's going on with our presidents. And with that, I think we're ready to start looking. What do you think, Jocelyn? I think we're all set up. Okay. Um, thank you, Erin. Yeah, stop sharing. So as I pull up our first portrait, I do want to make sure everyone's all set. You've got your elements in your head um, because this first portrait we're going to take a look at. I'm going to challenge you. You will have 30 seconds to take a look at the portrait top to bottom, left to right, think of those elements, and then I'm going to take the portrait away and we'll see what you remember. All right, so get your eyes all set and let me get my timer. And you have 30 seconds starting now. Take a close look. Take in all those elements and clues. 10 seconds. All right, and time is up. So now the fun part, let's see what you all remember. Can I have you put in the chat box your um, what you think the sitter, the person in the portrait, was the sitter standing or sitting? Oh my goodness, we're getting <laughs> lots, <laughs> lots of answers already. Lots of very fast responses. They are okay. warmed up. <laughs> he is standing. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. He's standing and. Um, can I ask how, um, how is he standing? How is his pose or posture? And perhaps it either you can get up and do the pose or posture or put it in the chat box. Excellent. Okay, so um, we're hearing that he is very official and formal in mm. his pose. Okay. Um, good, standing straight up with his hand raised. Oh, yes, that's right. Okay, mm -hmm. so he's very, um, definitely that upright, hand raised, um, excellent. Okay, Dignified, that's a good Ooh. word too. All right. Oh, okay, and Lakewood Elementary thinks that he's going to talk to people. Oh, interesting. All right, good. So um, just a couple more questions and then we'll look at the, the image itself. Um, how, how was he dressed? What was he wearing? All black. He's okay. wearing all black. All right. Keep that in mind. Okay. He has a suit on. Mm -hmm. um, he has formal clothes. Okay. Lila thinks he's wearing a coat or maybe a cloak. Oh, yes. Miles right. added suit. Great. So he is dressed formally in black in a suit. Excellent. Um, final question is what objects or things did you see 
around our sitter. All right, so Gus kicked us off with a sword. Okay. Um, a quill pen, feather. Oh, somebody noticed a rainbow in the window. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. That's not always easy to remember. Um, some furniture, so a desk or a table, maybe a cane. There were a lot of books, a rug. Somebody noticed a chair behind him. Oh, Lila noticed the rainbow too. Ooh. Okay, and then maybe a US shield or a flag on the okay. chair. Okay, all right, wow. I think you all have um, put the portrait back together um, based on your memory, collective memory. All right, well, let's take a look at the very um, distinguished portrait. So why don't you all take a closer look again and see if what you shared matches what with you with what you see. So um, yes, we do have here our sitter, and I think um, some folks already identified our sitter as George Washington, our first president. And um, I'm so glad you all noted that he is standing with a hand out. Um, I think someone had mentioned it's as if he's talking to someone and that is true. The artist Gilbert Stort has him in this pose to show that he's about to address Congress. Um, and then the formal black clothing that he's wearing, um, all these details tell the story of him as the first president. The fact that he is wearing clothing that is typical, that was typical for gentlemen to wear of that time. Note that he's not wearing a crown. He's not in a robe. So it shows that he's not going to be leading as a monarch. He's not going to be a king. Also, um, some of you may know his military background. Um, he, however, is not dressed in his military clothing. So again, we're getting the message that he's going to be a president leading um, uh, the people as if he is of the people. All right. And um, the things all around him. Um, I know you all noticed lots of different things. And just wanted to zero in on a couple of them. I'm so glad folks noticed the flag. So if you had a chance to look and count the stars, there would only be 13. Any reason why? If you could put in the chat box, why are there only 13 stars? Um, the original 13 colonies. Excellent. That is correct. Yes. And that shows <laughs> definitely the, the time frame the portrait was made in. Um, there were only 13 original colonies, 13 states. Um, and I wanted to also, since folks recognize the rainbow, I wanted to um, address that as well. Why would a rainbow be included in a portrait of our first president? Um, what symbolism might that have? Very good. Maybe it symbolizes hope. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, um, a couple of students are saying maybe hope for a new country. All right, definitely. So um, as you all know, a rainbow comes after a storm. And so we have the storm of the new nation being um, created, the Revolutionary War, um, and we have the rainbow as hope um, and the first president, George Washington, as hope for better times ahead. All right, so we have here a glimpse of a 
portrait of our first president, George Washington, um, that has been very well known and very recognizable. We're here also to learn a little bit more about um, him and his first spouse as um, the first power couple. So I wanted to shift over and um, take a look at our portrait with the first couple. Is everyone seeing the, great. All right, so we have a portrait here with the first couple as well as um, additional figures. I just wanted to um, point out the additional figures and then zero in on our power couple. So this is a family portrait of the Washingtons and they are joined by their two grandchildren. Their nicknames are Nellie and Wash. And in addition to the grandchildren, we do have here um, an image of one of their enslaved servants at the time. There has been recent research about um, the servant. Um, there, while it's not confirmed, they believe the servant's name was Christopher Shields. And um, just wanted to make reference that the fact that he has been included in this portrait um, alludes to this complicated interracial um, dependency and relationship the Washington family had. So wanted to now focus more carefully and closely on the power couple. And let's look first at Martha Washington. Can I have you all put in the chat box, how would you describe the way she is posed? How is she um, uh, placed in this portrait? Hmm. So as you were asking that question, um, a student mm -hmm. asked if she's drawing on a map, perhaps. Okay. Um, and they're they're generally describing her pose to be stiff, very mm. straight postured, very serious, very okay. formal. All right. Okay. So we have definitely Martha Washington, very upright, formal, um, stiff. Um, and I'm so glad someone had a question about what she's pointing at, because that actually is key to this whole portrait as well. So um, if you were able to look a little bit closer, the paper that she's pointing at is some sort of a map. And the map actually is of Washington, D.C. And this is now you may know or recall when George Washington was president, it was not in Washington, D.C. The White House had not been built yet. Um, and so this is a portrait of them after George Washington was president. And these are the official plans and maps to determine where the White House was to be built. So we have Martha Washington looking into these plans and um, looking as you may see, she's looking straight at George Washington, um, very engaged with uh, what could have been the conversation. Now let's take a quick look at George Washington. How is he dressed in this portrait? Maybe in an army coat, mm -hmm. in general clothing or uniform, a military mm -hmm. outfit. Yes. All right. Thank you. And it's interesting, as you recall, the um, first portrait we saw, the Lansdowne portrait of Washington, he was dressed in formal but not military uniform to show that he was going to lead the people um, not in a military way. 
Here, however, this portrait is wanting to send the message that he did have military experience. He is dressed as a reminder that he was commander in chief um, as they're looking at the plans for the White House. Um, and so here is um, the portrait of them. They would have been married close to 40 years at this time. And they were known for being very um, affectionate and um, supportive. Uh, Martha was known as being extremely supportive of George Washington. When he was leading the Revolutionary War, she would visit him at the military camps. When she learned that he was to be the president, um, she was not happy, but she understood and was supportive of um, his presidency. Um, so clearly this first couple was one that had mutual respect and um, understanding and love for each other. All right, so we've had a chance to catch a glimpse at our first couple, first power couple. We're gonna move along to um, the next one and I'll have Erin share what's next. Excellent, thank you, Jocelyn. Mm -hmm. um, let me pull up, while I'm pulling up the next one, a student had asked why there was French writing on that. Oh, oh yes, that is a good question. So um, the plans for the White House for um, Washington DC were made by, I believe his name is Pierre Lafont, who was French. And so that explains the French writing. All right, thank you for mm -hmm. sharing that. Um, I want you all to take a look at our next portrait on the screen. We have moved forward in American history a bit, um, not quite to today, um, but now we are in the 1980s. So I want you to take a, about 20 seconds to look this portrait over top to bottom, side to side, corner to corner, just like you did with the Washington portrait. Um, just silently look. And I'll be silent too for a moment. I'm going to zoom a little bit. You can really see what's going on. And now I am going to invite you to fit to imagine that you could jump inside of this portrait and pick a place that you would maybe have a seat or maybe stand in this space. And once you have chosen a space that you would like to be inside of this portrait, um, I'd like you to share in the chat one or two things that you would see from where you are seated or standing. All right, we do have some fast typers. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yep, we're seeing trees, flowers. Um, someone thinks there that he's at the White House. Mm, okay, mm -hmm. what makes you say that? Why do you think he might be at the White House? Um, noticing pillars. Very good. Yeah, we see the architecture yeah. of the building. All right. So now that you've had a chance to, you know, imagine that you are looking around this space and you're seeing some trees and some flowers and maybe you're seeing the White House, I'm wondering what you're hearing. What does it sound like inside of this space? Oh, all right. We're hearing birds twittering, calling. Oh, lots of birds. Um, <laughs> and then you're hearing nature that nature is peaceful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, it does look very peaceful, right? We see this beautiful garden back there. It doesn't appear to be very crowded. Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe there are some birds chirping away. Maybe we're hearing some wind in the bushes mm -hmm. and the trees back there. Um, maybe there's a little bit of talking happening, perhaps. Mm -hmm. What do you think it feels like inside of this portrait? As they're typing that, and I just wanted to add a couple more sounds. Oh, there, good. People thought they were hearing cicadas <laughs> um, and leaves rustling in the wind. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm now that you say cicadas, I'm thinking about when we had Brood X <laughs> yes. not very long ago. And, and that can be a really loud sound, can't it? Yeah. Especially for yeah. those of you on the East Coast here, you might remember that. Yeah. All right. So folks are feeling warm, but a bit chilly, humid, and relaxed, um, feeling the warmth of the sun. Okay, good. So you're feeling that sun. We see it's bright and beautiful coming down on you, right? Maybe a little chilly though. He is wearing a blazer over his shirt, right? Um, so perhaps it's a little bit brisk at this time. What do you think it smells like? All right, smells like spring. <laughs> it smells like spring. I like that. So you're, yeah. you're smelling um, flowers and <laughs> yeah. what else? Flowers and grass. Oh, someone smells the dirt. In the dirt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Maybe the, maybe it's a fresh flower bed, right? Maybe they mm. just put that in and you can imagine the smells of the dirt um, kind of wafting through the air. Lovely. Okay. Um, so this is President Ronald Reagan, and he was our 40th president. Now, the artist included some clues here that he's a president, right? We see maybe the White House behind him. We see the architecture, and that's definitely one of the symbols that we discussed at the beginning of our time together as being something we might include in a presidential portrait. Um, he's wearing a suit. Right. And we saw George Washington wearing a suit too, albeit a very different kind of suit. Obviously, fashion has changed over time. Do you see anything else here that looks presidential to you? Any other clues the artist included to tell us he's a president? Good question. Someone has responded by with the question happy, perhaps. Maybe he looks a little bit happy, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe he feels good about what he's doing. We see his pose. He's got one hand in his pocket and one hand out. He looks quite mm -hmm. confident. Yes. I'm glad you said that, Erin, because um, someone has noticed his, right, the white columns, his suit, the dignified pose. Um, someone else has noticed the, the relaxed but and confident pose. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and Reagan, he was a pretty popular president during the 1980s. People he, he was voted in by a pretty large margin, not quite as large as George Washington's unanimous <laughs> electoral college vote, um, but Reagan had one of the largest margins of winning the electoral college. Um, he left office towards the end of the Cold War and people had been quite, quite pleased with his foreign policy. Um, so he, he was very popular in some ways. He was very confident. And he had a lot of support from his wife, Nancy Reagan. So I want to show you a photograph of Ronald Reagan right here and his wife, Nancy, and then this fellow here. So I want you to take a look at this photograph and I want you to look at the objects, look at their poses, look at their facial expressions. And tell me, what do you think is going on here? 
Oh, we've already got an answer. Um, they're wondering maybe they're at a fair or a celebrity interview. Ooh, what do you see that tells you that? Oh, they're seeing a microphone. Okay, good. Uh, some sort of a tent. Oh, in the background. Mm -hmm. And they're seeing tuxedo lights. I mean, those are those are excellent responses. We see this tent with the stripes over here, so I can see why you went circus, maybe <laughs> something mm -hmm. a fair like that. Um, big lights, right? But they're wearing tuxedos. What is she wearing? Hmm. And while they're um, putting that in, someone made a comment about how they're they're looking at their facial expressions already and how they seem to be enjoying themselves. They're having a really good time here, aren't they? So uh, let me tell you, this gentleman here, um, his name is Jack Linkletter. And Jack Linkletter was a TV personality. He would run game shows. He would interview celebrities and things like this. And this photograph was actually taken before Reagan was president at a movie premiere. So George Washington, he was a general before he was president. President Reagan, he was a governor of California. And before that, he was an actor. So he actually, his, his, his acting career spanned multiple decades in Hollywood. Um, his wife, Nancy, who we see in this beautiful like fur shawl that she has on and her white gloves and her makeup just very, very precisely done. Um, she was also an actress on Broadway. And then she met Ronald Reagan in California and she decided to marry him. <laughs> and they, they got married um, and she was extremely supportive of him. And she was interviewed about this and how dedicated she was to him and to his career. And of that, she said, my life really began when I met my husband. What do you think she means by that? All right, so um, we've got Lakewood Elementary saying life was better with him. Yeah, I think that's a great way of putting it. Oh, and I have um, here, her life was boring until she met <laughs> Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Maybe so, I mean, I don't know. She was an actress on Broadway. <laughs> yeah. Sounds pretty exciting to me, but maybe not. Um, but she, it, I think it shows her support and her dedication to Ronald Reagan as an actor and then as a governor and then as president. And she was very supportive of him becoming president um, up until the point that someone actually tried to assassinate him. And he kind of joked, um, he was okay, he survived, and he joked that he just didn't duck fast enough when somebody tried to assassinate him, but she found the experience to be very upsetting. Um, but she, she stuck with him all the same and she drove her own initiatives as first lady in the white house. Um, she supported grandparent foster programs. So she supported grandparents taking in children to foster them. Um, and she also was known to be the person who really threw her weight behind the Just Say No to Drugs program um, that ran through elementary schools in the United States for much of the 80s. All right, we have a couple more portraits to take a look at. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so Jocelyn can show us our next one. Thanks, Erin. So yes, we've got um, one last set of portraits to explore and we're fast forwarding in time again and this time we're going to take a look at a portrait and I'm going to ask you to complete a few sentences 
So take a moment to look at this one. And um, in the chat box, if you could complete the sentence, I see, and just go ahead and list off the things that you're seeing. <laughs> Barack Have Obama. They in already? <laughs> Green flowers, plants and flowers. All right. Lots of flowers. Yes. A chair. Okay. <laughs> he seems to be in a hedge for some reason, some vines, okay. maybe a jungle, a nice oh. chair. Ah, all right. Great. So we are, um, y'all are establishing exactly what we're seeing here in the portrait. Barack Obama sitting in a chair with lots of greenery and flowers around him. Um, now, let's move on to the next sentence I would love for you to complete. And that is, I think, based on all these things that you're seeing, what are you thinking about what you're seeing in the portrait? So Barack Obama, flowers, chairs, seeing this. So what are you thinking? Maybe his family had a garden. It looks ah. very modern. Um, somebody's moved on to the wonder. Why is he sitting in a hedge? <laughs> it's a weird place to put a chair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Lots of interesting thoughts already. Oh, maybe he's interested in what the viewer is about to say. Mm, okay. Like he's listening. Ah, all right. Well, I think that is a um, good place to start. Let's look carefully and closely at Barack Obama. I'm wondering why folks think that um, he's listening. What shows that he has um, seems to be attentive and listening? Well, he's leaning towards us. Mm -hmm. He looks very serious. Yes, he's leaning forward. And it's clear that he's looking at something. So his overall body language, good. Direct eye All contact. Right. They're okay. on it. Okay. Yes, definitely. For sure. So yes, his pose is really cluing us in that he's listening, right? He's leaning forward. Um, his gate, we talk about gaze where um, the sitter is looking is right out at us, the viewer. Um, and we see that we have his attention. So yes, we see him in this listening pose. Excellent. Um, what else is going on? I think there were other thoughts about him. Um, and let's try to figure out what this um, portrait is telling us about him in addition to this listening um, pose. Um, we've, I know there was mention of lots of flowers and greenery. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that these flowers symbolize certain things. So I don't know if we have any botanists out there, but can anyone identify any of the flowers? Hmm. Um, so they're thinking maybe lilacs in there. Someone's hmm. thinking maybe flowers from Hawaii. Okay. Yeah, maybe a national Wonderful. flower for some states. All right. Yes, you all are right on track. It is interesting. The artist, Kahindi Wiley, did include flowers to help chart Barack Obama's career and his path and tell the story. So you might have noticed some purple African lilies. And these purple African lilies are um, representing um, Barack Obama's father's heritage from Africa. And then we see some jasmine, these white 
jasmine flowers, and that is to represent um, the fact that he, Barack Obama, was born in Hawaii and lived in Hawaii. And we have these kind of pink and yellow flowers, pink and orangish colored flowers. They are chrysanthemum to represent um, the flower as the official flower of Chicago to show Barack Obama's um, political career began in Chicago. So these flowers chart his career and chart his path. Oh, and then we also have some rosebuds to show hope and promise as well. And um, I just wanted to ask and explore a couple other things with the portrait. So we have this portrait of Barack Obama as the 44th president. And I think someone had noticed the chair and how it's floating. Um, why do you think we have this presidential portrait of Barack Obama um, in this setting with a floating chair? What might that all mean? I think it was a bit of a weighty question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, maybe it means that he's different. Okay, yes. And that is correct, actually, um, given that he was the first African American president. Um, Kahindi Wiley had that in mind as well. Um, the fact that he was the first one, um, Wiley wanted to create this portrait that was um, really showing that he was different. Um, and we see that with this portrait. All right, now that we have had a chance to pull apart um, thoughts, what you were seeing and what you were thinking, um, any final wonders? What would you, what are you wondering about with this portrait before we move on? Why is he dressed so casually? Oh, good question. And I'm so glad you brought that up. Yes. And what makes you say that he seems casually dressed? He doesn't have a tie. He Very doesn't good. have a tie. That's right. OK. So um, he's dressed in a suit, but he does not have a tie and that gives him that casual sense. Um, some say this lack of a tie um, adds to this whole um, idea of him being the listener, the attentive president, um, as if he's talking to someone after work somewhere. Um, and so that casual sense um, gives him that approachable um, air about him. There's one question about why there are vines too. Oh, okay. Yes, we're noticing vines as well. Um, I don't know offhand if if there's symbolism behind the vines, um, but I'm I imagine it might have to do um, with the whole idea of how. Um, un, unbelievable and how unexpected it was to have Obama as um, the first African-American president. We have a All couple right. more questions. Oh. Do we have oh, time? We do? Okay, so okay. why are there such bright colors? Ooh, yes, bright colors. Well, Kahindi Wiley is known for his vibrant, portraits and um, work. 
And so I think that adds to the style, the element of style of the artist. And then why are the front and back legs of the chair different? Oh, I'm so glad you noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's, Erin, if, if you know anything about the chair, otherwise- I think it's just the style of the chair. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, style of the chair. But it is interesting that the front legs and, and the back legs are different. Wow, mm -hmm. these are good questions and good <laughs> wonderings. <laughs> All right, well, I think it is time to head over to our final portrait of the final presidential power couple we're going to examine. And with this one, before I share a bit about the portrait itself, I'm gonna ask you all, since this is the final portrait, how is, um, how does this power couple look to you? So young. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Relaxed, uh, close. Okay. At home. Ah, all right. And oh, what- Loving, is... powerful, sorry. They're okay. coming in with a lot of good no, words. No. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I was just gonna ask um, if, you all could elaborate on some of these things. What's showing you that they're at home, that they seem loving, that um, they, they look young? What elements, what clues are showing you all these things? Uh, very good. So they're sitting on a couch, they're leaning into each other, um, the artwork around them. Great. Mm -hmm. There are paintings. Okay. The couch isn't very fancy. It's just a couch. There's <laughs> yeah. a rug. Yeah. Home thing. Oh. All <laughs> right. Well, you all are extremely observant and have pulled out all these elements to tell the story of this portrait of this power couple that um, was... I think from this portrait, we see that they were prepared and um, ready to face what they were going to be facing. Um, this is a portrait of Barack Obama and Michelle Obama before he even was a senator, which he was a senator before he was president. So this is before he essentially began his political career. And um, he, the, the couple, was interviewed um, for a series and a book by the photographer Mariana Cook, who wanted to highlight certain American couples. And here we have the Obamas. Um, as uh, you all have noticed, yes, based on their pose and posture, they are very comfortable, very loving, very close. And um, Michelle Obama was wary and not thrilled about Barack Obama going into politics as it is, as it was. And um, while she had her reservations about it, similar to Martha Washington, um, she was supportive of um, his decisions when um, he did decide to um, run for Senate and then as president. So they most recently celebrated their 30th wedding anniversary. And she has um, recently wrote a book as well, sharing about their relationship and their marriage and how um, while there's 50-50 is supposedly the ideal balance with marriages. She shares how it's always um, more on one side. Somebody's always giving more. And um, in their relationship, that has happened, but it's been um, very supportive on both ends, um, regardless of whether it was not 50-50. And um, so we have this power couple um, 
so interesting to see them before they become the first or um, the uh, presidential um, power couple that they were. All right. I think we have had a chance to look closely at three sets of presidential power couples, the Washingtons, the Reagans, and the Obamas. Um, just curious, of the three, which um, one was most interesting um, to you? The Obamas are popular. <laughs> okay. The Reagans. We got one vote for the Reagans. That's good. And another for George and Martha. All right. Wonderful. Well, that's good to know. Hopefully you all have a chance, have had a chance to just catch a glimpse at some of these presidential power couples and some of the dynamics that were involved with them and had a chance to look closely at some portraits of our presidents. So we're glad to have you all join us. Thank you very much for being with us.